Good evening and welcome back. You're watching News Break. Now, uh, something which is data that is released by the government every year, the same thing has been done now as well, of Indians renouncing the Indian passport or giving up Indian citizenship. Let's quickly take a look and try to explain what exactly is happening. So the first piece of data that we are going to put on screen is this. So take a look at these numbers on your screen right now. A total of 17 and a half lakh people have given up citizenship since 2011. So in 2011, you can see that this number was about uh, 1 lakh 22,000 in a year. In 2012, it uh, dropped a little to 1 lakh 20. 2013 increased a little by 1 lakh 31. In 2014, around 1 lakh 29. So you got the trend that it's, it's, it hovers between 120 and 130. Then in 2015, it increased to 1 lakh 31. The subsequent year, it increased further to 1 lakh 41. Then dipped slightly to 1 lakh 33, which means the range kind of changed a little. More people had started renouncing their Indian citizenship. In 2018, it was 1 lakh 34. In 2019, just before the onset of COVID, it was 1 lakh 44,017 people who gave up Indian citizenship. In 2020, and this is clearly an impact of COVID, the number of people renouncing their citizenship came down to 85,256. And as many people explain, perhaps it was the backlog which you saw in 2021 where it increased dramatically to 1,63,000 and then in 2022 to 2,25,620. Now the latest estimates by the government suggest that till June 2023, as many as 87,000 people, Indians, have renounced their citizenship. So that is the latest that we are hearing. Now, uh, it will be very difficult for us to extrapolate and give you the numbers for 2023, but... Uh, if you take a guess, it will be somewhere in the same range as 2021. Now, that is still high. So, if you add all of this up since 2011, 17 and a half lakh Indians have given up their citizenship. Now, where are they going? Let's quickly put that on the screen, one by one. First, let's show you the countries. So, USA, 50,000 of them in 2017 went to the US, in Australia, 20,000, England, 19,000, Canada, and Italy, the least preferred destination. Now, this is, of course, the figure for 2017. We show you the results for 2018 also, as you will be able to see in 2018. Uh, it's pretty much the same trend that is being followed. In 2019, there was a, a huge increase in the number of people going to uh, the USA, Canada second, Australia. So, it's the same pattern that you see. Maximum, go to the US. 2020, because of COVID, it came down dramatically, but the trend remained the same. More people to the US than Canada, Australia, England, Italy. And uh, this went on significantly. Even, in fact, in 21 and 22 also, the very same pattern has followed. As you can see, in 2021, 55,000 uh, approximately go to the US, and it's following the same pattern. Australia next, Canada next, England, and then Italy. Now, let's quickly show you the map uh, on where all these Indians are going. So, with the help of a map, you understand these numbers that we showed you on your screen right now. So, Indians leaving India to go to Canada, USA, England, as well as Australia. So, these are the four preferred destinations. But as we have found out from uh, uh, more data that it is not just these destinations, there are certain others also. Now, uh, Indians giving up citizenship uh, to acquire citizenship of other countries include many European countries as well. But a bulk of the people who are giving or renouncing their citizenship, it is for these four countries. In that order, US, Australia, Canada and the United Kingdom. Now, let's quickly also tell you uh, what this actually means in terms of business, you see, the people who are going, many of them are high net worth individuals. Now, this is a Henley Migration Report of 2023. It says that 6,500 millionaires have migrated this year. 
And net loss of millionaires in 2023 alone uh, has been 13,500 Chinese have gone, 6,500 Indians have gone, and uh, 3,200 uh, Britishers have left their respective countries. So that's the data that this gives. In India, the millionaire outflow is down from 7,500 in 2022. So perhaps, I don't know, a little bit of silver lining. The number of net worth, uh, high net worth individuals has come down by 1,000 if you compare it from 2022. Uh, now, prohibitive tax legislation, according to Henley Migration Report, uh, complex rules are reasons behind this migration. Dubai, Singapore are preferred destinations for wealthy Indians. The outflow is not concerning. India producing more new millionaires, says this report. And 1.22 lakh millionaires are likely to migrate globally in 2023. That's the detail that this report gives. But now let's also tell you that perhaps one of the things that came up in discussions with many people was whether dual citizenship could actually hold the key. There is a raging debate whether Indians should allow dual citizenship, uh, India should actually allow dual citizenship or not. Because many developed countries allow dual citizenship and these include all those destinations where Indians love to go. That is United Kingdom, United States, Canada and Australia. Majority of the Indians, as we told you, take citizenship of these four countries. Now, what is the legal position? You see, the Indian constitution does not allow dual citizenship. But in 2005, the government introduced Overseas Citizenship of India or OCI. Now, OCI members, they are not allowed to vote in India. However, they will be given privileges, every other privilege other than voting. Now, uh, in 2010, the Dr. Manmohan Singh government tried to consider voting rights for NRIs, uh, which means there is a rule. You are eligible to vote even if you are not staying in the country, but you have to hold the Indian passport. So again, the same problem comes again. So if you renounce your passport, then you can't vote because dual citizenship is not allowed according to the Indian constitution. Now, does this become a case perhaps? To stop so many people, it's not a good number, you know, 17 and a half uh, uh, lakh people going away is not good. But what does this mean? Let's very pragmatically discuss this. Uh, Paresh Karya, expert on immigration law and immigration advisor, CEO Quest Advisors is with us. We have Ambassador Virendra Gupta, President of the Indian Council of International Cooperation, is a former diplomat. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Ambassador Suresh Goel. Director General of Indian Council of Cultural Relations, ICCR, and Kawalpreet Kaur is an immigration consultant. Thank you very much. It's a very important topic of discussion. Uh, let's kickstart this discussion. Ambassador Goel, I want to begin with you first. Uh, are these numbers necessarily bad news that more and more Indians are now Ooh. renouncing their citizenship? Uh, difficult question, really. What do you call bad or good numbers, really? Uh, I think basically, rather than calling the numbers bad or good, and as usual, there will be always some people who want to migrate to the other countries. They want to acquire the citizenship of other countries for economic reasons, various other reasons. Uh, there is always a mix of factors which comes in here. But I think what is more important is really the trend, which you brought out right in the beginning. Now, uh, 2011, you had one lad something uh, who were actually renouncing their citizens. The numbers they remained constant practically to 2013, 14, and then the number began to grow. And today, yes, last year there were 225, 25,000, and this year again maybe they will go to the same number. Now, when people choose to give up their member citizenship and want to become citizen of other countries. That more or less for two reasons, really. One is, of course, uh, very obvious, a political kind of an advantage. Uh, we know the number of migrants going from Africa to Europe, and you, have, you hear of the ships uh, carrying the migrants. They are looking for better, better life, freedoms, and so on and so forth. And the others are the economic opportunities. Now, I would like to believe that if the number has increased over the last four or five years, 
it is more or less for the economic opportunity. But then we have a bright economic story in India. In fact, last year there was a discussion of a similar kind, different, and I had given an argument that why should anybody want to migrate to UK? India is a better economic story at the moment. But if you say that there are, there are about 2,500 high net worth individuals who are migrating to UK, that's a surprising factor, really. Why should they want to actually go to the UK, where the economy is actually a basket case? But they still want to go to the UK, maybe for different reasons. So what I would say is, what is worrying, what is bad is increasing number of people wanting to give up their citizenship of India, not the numbers themselves. Yeah. And what is actually concerning is most of these are not really primarily the same destination, except the USA. But most of them, they want to go to the other countries and use UK, maybe Italy, more like a transit route on for, for better uh, destinations. Okay. But for me, really, yeah. The yes. factor is that why should they want to actually why, why get should a they new go? citizenship? Another point is that uh, if, 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 e if better economy and for economic reasons yes. is what you say uh, is forms the bulk of the reasoning, uh, then UK should not be uh, considered as an option. However... However, it is still happening because if you look at the numbers, it's, it's dramatically increasing. Now, it can be attributed, Ambassador Gupta, to perhaps uh, uh, the year 2020 where it came down to 85,000 because of COVID. But the, even if you consider the backlog, 2022 numbers were particularly high. And I know it's very difficult to extrapolate, but uh, if 87,000 have already renounced this year till June then the number is again going to go uh, or, or touch somewhere close to 2 lakh again. Now, I want to ask you, many countries across the world offer dual citizenship. India doesn't. Do you feel there could be some benefits in perhaps considering this as an option? Well, I think in broad terms, uh, answer to your question is that yes, India should consider dual citizenship. Because, you know, this is the trend. There isn't any evident conflict of interest or security threat which prevented people from giving out dual citizenship earlier. Today, a large number of countries uh, have a provision of that kind and I think there is no reason why. If there are security issues, that those can be sorted out, those can be handled. Now, when you look at these numbers, there is clearly an increase and there is an increasing trend. But, uh, you know, we have to have a balanced perspective when you look at these numbers. After all, what is causing this? There are people in India, there are young people in India who are looking for jobs. And since they are not able to get good jobs here, they are looking for jobs in these countries. So one of the most convenient routes is to go to study abroad. In America, if somebody were to apply for a job in America, he would not get it while sitting in India. So the most convenient route is to enroll yourself for a master's degree and then afterwards the uh, you know, avenues for job, etc. open up. Now when a person is working, and I think you have to look at it from his perspective, uh, he finds it more convenient to have the first the green card and then you know, following thereon uh, a citizenship of that country. So I think you, one, one can't blame them. It, it does look bad to look at these figures. There are uh, 100,000 people or 150,000 people. This year, again, we might be hitting uh, 175, 200,000 people. So it just looks bad. But from their perspective, they are compelled to seek. Uh, and I think there are, there are some positives as well. There are negatives and positives. And I think on the positive side, Sankit, I would say that uh, they are okay. contributing to a tremendous amount of outreach and goodwill for India in these countries. Okay. You know, and the kind of contribution no, that they're is, making as diaspora, we all the, know that. Yeah, uh, which is why I come back to the main question, Paresh Karya. Uh, what stops or prevents, uh, say, a country like India joining many other countries? In fact, many of these countries where Indians are going allow dual citizenship. We don't. And that is why this renunciation is happening. So do you feel that this is a case where we too should open up, be open to, as a country, be open to dual citizenship? Uh, has this issue come up 
I am sure you must be dealing with a lot of, as an immigration advisor, with a lot of such concerns. Some people right. get emotional also. It's not an easy decision, no? Being an Indian, right. giving away your citizenship. Right. Yeah. There's a certain right. amount of emotions also involved. But people still right. do it. Right. So, Sanket, I will come to that. But before that, let me just comment upon the numbers. You know, we are talking about these numbers, huge numbers. But if you look at the numbers closely, you will see that it's not so alarming. First of all, if you look at the numbers over the last 10 years, the average number every year has been about 130 to 140,000, you know, people renouncing their citizenship. In the year 2021, we have seen the number dipping to 85,000. This is, of course, because of COVID. You know, all the processing of all kind of visas had come to a standstill and there was, you know, the number dipped. And then we are seeing a spike in the next two years because the backlog which was there in 2021 started getting clear. Having said that, of course, we have seen a trend of increasing numbers. The second thing I would like to say that when we look at these numbers, we should keep in mind that these are the numbers of people who are giving up citizenship, okay, and to acquiring citizenship of another country. Now, in order to acquire the citizenship of another country, you don't get it immediately. You first have to become a permanent resident of that particular country. You need to stay in that country for four, five, six years. Only after that, you become eligible for citizenship. So all those people who are taking up citizenship now have actually moved there to US, UK, Canada, Australia, etc. Maybe five years, six years, seven years back. They have not moved now. And they are now opting to, when they become eligible for citizenship, they are opting to take up citizenship of other country. So the numbers that you are looking at should be looked at in that context. Second thing, coming back to your question of, you know, dual citizenship. Now, if you look at it, you know, we already offer overseas citizen of India status to foreign nationals, Indian nationals who have taken up foreign citizenship. With an OCI card, they virtually get most of the benefits which a resident Indian would get. You know, they can come to India, they can stay in India as long as they want. They don't need any visa. They can work there. They can do business over there. So virtually they have most of the rights, except they cannot vote or they cannot take up government position and they do not have Indian passport. Now, when we talk about Indian passport, actually the passport which they hold, the American passport, the British passport or the UK passport or Canadian passport, these are all far more powerful than Indian passports. You know, those passports will allow you visa free travel to over 170 countries, whereas Indian passport will allow you to a visa free travel to only 70 countries. So obviously, when they have an option to choose between the two passport, you know, they would prefer to choose, choose the passport and citizenship of our other country. No, right. which is why so, you, your point on the OCI card is valid. But you see, uh, Kamal Preet Kaur, yeah. as, as Indians also, while we, we have uh, envisioned and uh, put a provision of OCI, right, Overseas Citizenship of India, which gives you everything but voting right, uh, what stops us from considering full-fledged dual citizenship, something which happens the world over? I understand the point on passport not being as strong or powerful enough as say a UK or a US, but you still continue to be a citizen. I don't know, I mean, for some it may attach some notional value, no, to continue to remain the citizen of this country. Yeah, see, basically there are a lot of reasons through which a person can migrate to uh, some other country. Not for all the people, it's mandatory that they are only looking for a permanent settlement over there. But they can also looking for a temporary visa so that they can upgrade their personal life or they can upgrade their currently life that they are going on in. Right. So it's not always the reason they're only uh, looking for a per permanent settlement over there. Like we are working in Oasis since 23 years, we are facing a lot of candidates uh, coming to us and uh, like just introducing their problems. That's why exactly they are looking forward to migrate to some other country. So there are a lot of uh, different reasons for different candidates who uh, like just come up to us that they want to move, migrate for temporary reason also to temporary work, upgrade their lifestyle also because there is of course a better lifestyle and a society for women their children, they are, they are having a safe environment for their children also over there. Also, as there is a currency difference, so people are working since 15 years in India, they are not able, uh, like uh, currently able to build a car or a build a house. But in Canada, they are able to do or work as it properly in even just two or three months as well. 
so there are basic different uh, various reasons of the countries or the candidates also who are moving to these countries for a temporary purposes also for a permanent purposes also so this varies from candidates or clients profile to profile that they are uh, following or moving or migrating to the country with some uh, their individual purposes or goals also okay uh, ambassador goel uh, quickly want to come back to you do you feel that this is uh, uh, a bad thing i come back to that very question because you know on the face of it fine people want to leave they are leaving but uh, do you feel that this is uh, i mean there are people it's their free choice they've decided to move on no again there is no value judgment here but when you find there are citizens of a country who want to renounce it to become citizen of another country for whatever reason it does reflect on that country system why doesn't even a homeless person from the usa who may not have even half the income of that of an indian citizen living in india but he will not give up his usa passport if he has one from the uk even if the economy is doing so badly they will not want to give up their uk citizenship or italian or whatever it is why would somebody from india want to give up the indian citizenship for a benefit of building a house or something like that in canada so it does reflect on that country bad or good or whatever it is it does and that is actually unfortunate number 2 as far as the uh, substantive part is concerned it makes no difference really because uh, we are after all proud of a very very young human resource who are actually active in industry who are active in technology who are active in economy and contributing by economy and we are proud of that fact but still i would really say that losing anyone from india through the citizenship route they may continue to settle abroad they may continue to do whatever they want they may continue to do with the green card whatever it is but it does become a reflection and that is bad yes that reflection is bad mr gupta last word uh, do you see this trend uh, continuing because you know when you look at the numbers and let's put those numbers on the screen from 2011 to 2022 and in 2023 till june 87000 plus have renounced their citizenship there is a noticeable uh, upward trend right these numbers are increasing and even if you were to consider the covid year of 2020 even by that standard that number is still increasing no the numbers are going up very clearly and uh, as i said there is a reason for it uh, in fact uh, you should look at these statistics in the context of how many indians are going to study overseas now as looking at these figures about 6 to 7 lakh uh, indians go to study uh, abroad now most of them are not going because there isn't uh, education facility in india but i think because it is a most convenient route to finding a job now you can't blame young people seeking to better their prospects uh, and i think we have to look at the spin off benefit that occurs to us is that when they add on to the vast indian diaspora yeah. they bring to you know uh, add to india's soft power projection uh, they contribute to india's uh, uh, goodwill in those countries they impact uh, even in terms of political understanding and uh, commercial relations but i think there is i mentioned that there is a negative uh, aspect to it there is but a I'm downside Gupta, to it you do feel that uh, Uh, whether theoretical or practical there is no problem if the country opens up dual citizenship i personally I understand the passport may not be as powerful. i personally feel that yeah. uh, all this issue of uh, security reason and whatever is uh, hugely overblown mm. uh, there is no reason why india cannot follow the example of uh, so many different countries and so many countries which have introduced the system yeah, of, of dual or actually. triple even triple passports uh, yeah. so i think uh, we will be spared this ignominy of uh, indians having to surrender their passport Correct. they will certainly not surrender if there was a provision that they could take Nobody the would want american that. citizenship and keep the indian citizenship they would like to do that that's true thank you very much for joining us ambassador gupta ambassador goel uh, kamalpreet kaur as well as paresh karya on this very important and significant decision should the government consider opening up dual citizenship it requires an amendment in the constitution Good night and goodbye.